I've got the Chameleon Tactical Dipole 2.0. Uh, we're going to put this antenna on the air, so please keep watching for more. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio q and I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community, and today we're going to take a look at the Chameleon Tactical Dipole 2.0. Now, in a previous video, I alluded to the fact that uh, the reason this antenna was tactical is because the wire is green. Well, that's not entirely the case. Uh, the reason that this is a tactical dipole antenna is that because it, it is purpose-built, and we're gonna talk about that purpose in a bit. Uh, but first, I just wanna say that uh, Chameleon did provide this antenna to me uh, for review, uh, but um, my opinions are my own without any outside influence. So let's get on with the review. Now, the Chameleon Tactical Dipole 2.0 is a clone of the L3 Harris RF-1944 uh, tactical antenna. Uh, now that's a military grade antenna that also comes with a military price. Uh, this tactical dipole pr provides similar performance at a more reasonable cost. Even though this might be a civilian model antenna, it is a perfect choice for military, uh, non-military, governmental, non-governmental uh, groups, uh, amateur radio operators, uh, Mars, CAP, uh, Saturn, things like that. It's a, it's a good all-around um, multi-band antenna. Uh, it's an improvement on Chameleon's original tactical dipole antenna. The tactical dipole 2 is 30% lighter. It has um, simpler components, so it is easier to assemble and deploy. Uh, it's a broadband HF antenna that'll cover 1.8 through 54 uh, megahertz. Uh, with an SWR of 2 to 1 or less, so you should be able to use this for the most part in the amateur radio bands without a tuner. Uh, you might want a tuner to just kind of take the edge off depending on how the antenna is deployed, what your terrain and surroundings are like. The antenna consists of three main components. Uh, first off, is the Chameleon Transformer. Uh, this is a standard uh, Chameleon 5 to 1 transformer that you see in a lot of their antenna products. So there's nothing really surprising about that. And then there are two of these uh, terminating resistors. Uh, they go on either side of the dipole antenna. And then the dipole consists of a 60, 60 feet of wire that goes from the center unit to the terminating resistor, and then another 25 feet of counterpoise wire that uh, goes from the terminating resistor out. Um, the resistors are built onto wire winders so that uh, the wire is conveniently stored. So you've got these, these three um, units here. It does come with uh, tent stakes for uh, deployment. Uh, this is to uh, stake the, uh, the resistors out. You also get some rope, a winder to hold the rope. You get a throw weight bag, um, nice 250 gram weight bag for deploying the antenna and 50 feet of cable. Uh, this is their chame the Chameleon's 50 foot cable with the uh, uh, built-in uh, choke ballon. Everything stores in this <laughs> uh, nice brown colored uh, storage bag. So this is a complete antenna system. You've got everything here to, um, to deploy the antenna. Antenna is rated for 100 watts digital, 250 watts CW, uh, 500 watts uh, sideband operation. They say that you can deploy this in about 10 minutes. Um, once, you're sort of, once you're trained on the operation of the antenna, we'll, we'll test that out in our review to see how fast I can put this antenna up. It's good for medium or short and medium range communications, 40 meters and below. Uh, in the inverted V formation, it's going to act as um, more of an Envis style antenna especially on the lower bands. 20 meters and above, it should be more of a nice medium range antenna. When we say medium, 300 to 1500 miles. Uh, don't expect this to be a big uh, DXing antenna. Although on a higher band, you, might, you're, you're, you could go um, uh, 3000 miles or more, uh, just depending on band conditions. But um, really consider this to be a medium to uh, a short range antenna. You can deploy this in a couple of different ways. Uh, the most common would be the inverted V uh, configuration. 
Uh, that's with the center unit up at about 25 feet. Uh, these spread out so that the resistors are on the ground and then the, and then the um, counterpoises uh, extending beyond that. Uh, to put it in the, in the inverted V, you're going to need approximately 110 to 160 feet of space, uh, just depending on how you run your counterpoise wires out. You can take away one of the um, uh, resist uh, one of the, uh, the legs and do it as a sloper. Uh, the way you would do that is you would mount the uh, terminating resistor high at about 25 feet. The um, counterpoise would dangle down and then the um, main wire would come out as a sloping configuration to the uh, transformer that will be ground mounted and then you can also run a counterpoise wire off of the transformer here. That's going to take up much less space, approximately 60 feet or so. Uh, with the um, in the sloping configuration, you're going to get medium range on the higher bands and uh, 80 meters. It's really going to act as uh, a ground wave antenna. It doesn't really work too well. Um, Envis in the in the in the the single leg sloper for 80 meters. Uh, just kind of be aware of that. It's more of a ground wave kind of thing, uh, but um, you still get good performance on the higher bands. Purpose built, like I said, it's 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 broad banded. It's so it's got those dips on all of those amateur bands. Great for um, you know if if you're band hopping, say if you're doing ALE automatic link establishment. Uh, digital stuff like Winlink, where you need access to multiple bands in order to um, establish that Winlink connection. It would be a, it's a good antenna for that. Uh, or if you wanted to jump from band to band uh, for HF communications and you don't really want to change things. Read the instruction manuals. There's a lot of information in here, uh, especially about how it's, it's going to operate on the different bands, what its uh, radiation patterns look like and so forth. And you really need to know, know and understand that information uh, when you're gonna put this antenna on the air. So that's the uh, Chameleon Tactical Dipole 2.0. It's just sort of the overview of it. Uh, what I'm gonna do next is um, we're, gonna, uh, we're gonna deploy it. I'm gonna put it on the air. We're gonna make a few contacts and then um, give you my final remarks. I got all of the parts of the antenna laid out here in order. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the timer on my phone and I'm gonna put this antenna up and we're gonna see how long it takes me. So here we go. Okay. Three minutes in. We're at five minutes. Let's give her a lift. We're at eight minutes. All I have left to do is to stake out the resistors. Ooh, I only got 45 seconds. There we go. 10 minutes, 46 seconds. I can't complain about that. Park to park, Kilo, Bravo, Niner, Victor, Bravo, Romeo. Is that uh, Kilo, Bravo, Nine, Victor, Bravo, Romeo, over? QSL, QSL, you're coming in a 5151 into park number Kilo, four, two, three, eight. Back to you. Uh, four, two, three, eight, four, two, three, eight, QSL. Okay, correction, four, two, three, eight, four, two, three, eight, QSL. Roger, roger. Uh, what's your park number, please? Yeah, the park here is Victor Echo 1575. Victor Echo 1575, over. Roger the 1575, and thanks for the park. Yeah, you're a five and one, five and one as well here, over. Roger, roger, yeah, you're starting to fade, but I got you in the log. Park to park, can I get that call again? Kilo, Bravo, Niner, Victor, Bravo, Romeo. Okay. Kilo, Bravo, Nine, Victor, Bravo, Romeo. QSL. 
QSL, QSL, you're a 5353 five, here into park number Kilo 4238. 4238, back to you. I copy 4238, and I've got you about 5-4. QSL? QSL, the 5-4. Roger, Roger, you got my park number is Kilo 6602, QSL? QSL, the 6602, thanks for the park and have a great activation. Hey, appreciate the activation, uh, appreciate the park support, 73. You are good. I got, a, I got about uh, seven contacts on the uh, 20 meter band. Uh, uh, I want to tell you a little bit about this antenna. It is, I've got it configured um, east-west. So it's, it's going to have its, its major lobes uh, go broadside the antenna. So it is really firing north-south. I'm picking up a lot of uh, Florida, Georgia, Texas type contacts uh, today so far. So, uh, and I'm not hearing a whole lot um, east-west. So <laughs> this is, I'm primarily doing north-south right now, uh, which is a little bit of a challenge because it's, it, it limits the number of, of stations, the number of, of, of parks you can yeah, you can pick up. Uh, fortunately, it's it's this is support your parks weekend. There's a lot of people on the air, so I've just been kind of hunting and pouncing park to parks. I uh, just need a three more to get the activation here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bump up to some of the other bands. Maybe we'll have better luck on 17 and 15 meters. Who knows? We'll see. So um, let's go up to 17 meters. Kilo seven, kilo Romeo, kilo. Kilo 7, Kilo, Romeo, Kilo, gotcha, 5-3 here into Wisconsin, park number 4238, back to you. Roger, Roger, you're at a 5-2 here in uh, southern Utah, 7-3, have a good day. Roger, Roger, thanks a lot for the southern Utah, you have a great day too. CQ, CQ, parks on the air, CQ, parks on the air, KB9, VBR, Kilo, Bravo, Niner, Victor, Bravo, Romeo, calling CQ for parks on the air. Whiskey, Bravo, 4, uniform, Bravo, Kilo. Whiskey Bravo 4, Uniform Bravo Kilo, gotcha. 5-1 into Wisconsin, park number Kilo 4238, back to you. Uh, QSL, park 4238, uh, you're about a 3-3, uh, 3-3 three three, three into North Florida. Roger the 3-3 three and three into North Florida, and uh, thanks a lot for the contact today. This is KB9 VBR, Parks on the Air, QRZ. Okay, I want to say a couple things about the Chameleon uh, Tactical Dipole uh, 2.0. I had pretty good results with it. Um, on my test out here, I got 13 contacts, uh, uh, Parks on the Air, um, on 20, 17, and 15 meters. The really nice thing about the antenna is that uh, you can jump from band to band without having to use a tuner. My SWR was underneath uh, two to one, and on those bands, it was averaging about 1.5 to one, good enough that I didn't have to pull the tuner out. Um, and uh, what makes that a good thing also is one of the downsides of this style of antenna is that because, uh, You'll, you'll, multi-band antennas like that, you're going to lose efficiency, <laughs> and uh, so uh, you give up you give up uh, efficiency for convenience, which um, is you know a decision you're going to have to make. Uh, the I noticed um, when I was done with the testing, I switched out the chameleon with the dipole antenna just to see if it made a difference, and of course, uh, it was there was a, a marked difference between the two antennas. I probably saw about a 2S unit change on my meters. Uh, so we're talking probably about a 12 dB difference between the uh, tactical dipole 2 and a standard 20 meter dipole antenna, which would not be unexpected with this style of antenna because we also have, you know, we've got the 5 to 1 transformer and we've got the uh, terminating resistors on the end. So uh, you're going to you're going to lose um, you know, efficiency on that, uh, but it's 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 a manageable loss. So um, just to kind of keep that in mind, um, this is not a do all kind of antenna. Uh, this antenna has got a very specific use case, and I think you'll find it's going to work great in certain situations for MCOM emergency communications where you need a multi-band antenna that you can quickly slip from uh, frequency to frequency, band to band, uh, without having to readjust. 
Uh, it is directional, uh, so you can kind of tailor its directivity. Uh, we've got the antenna going east-west, so I had a high, very high propensity of north-south contacts with this antenna. Actually, south contacts since I'm in Wisconsin. So it is quite directional. Uh, so keep that in mind when you deploy the antenna so you can even though you know you lose some efficiency you can make up for it in its in its its radiation pattern uh, it's great for uh, modes that you need to hop on you know maybe like wind link or ale uh, uh, automatic link establishment where you need to go from band to band uh, to either you know deliver an email message, pick up an email message, or to establish communication. So it's really good for that. Uh, it's based on a military style antenna. So this antenna is very rugged. Uh, it's extremely well constructed. It goes up rather quickly. It uh, um, you can recover it rather quickly. So that's a couple of good things that it has going for it. Uh, but um, Think about this uh, for a you know a military a military style antenna. You know, think of it. Uh, think of its uses in those in those kind of terms, where you maybe you need um, short range, really short range range ground wave communications. It's going to work well for that. Envis on the lower bands. It's going to work well for that. And then uh, the medium range up to about 1,500 miles. It's it's um, good on that with the upper bands. And just um, keep in mind that. Um, you're going to lose a little bit of the efficiency, but that's okay uh, because you gain it in in its utility and its convenience. So uh, that's my review of the uh, Chameleon uh, Tactical Dipole 2.0. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. If you have any questions, or comments on this antenna, leave them and leave them down below. We'll kind of filter through the, there, try to answer your questions. Maybe we'll do a follow up or on one of our live streams too. But um, for this time, I'm Michael, KB9 VBR. Have a great day in 73.